Don't pay. 
Good evening, everybody. Welcome. It's a battle again with the pub next door. Playing live music, beautiful as it is, but it means that we can't hear each other. Um, Roz is going for the service virtually and live. Why not? Double whammy. <laughs> um, you've got me for the whole service today because clergy haven't turn up, so you're stuck with me. The priest in charge is here, but because he's the priest in charge, he doesn't work. So you're left with me. You are left with me. God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Come, bless the Lord, all you servants of the Lord. You that by the night stand in the house of the Lord. Lift your hands up towards the sanctuary and bless the Lord, the Lord who made heaven and earth. Give you blessings out of Zion. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us so that we might live through Jesus. And it's definitely Queenborough because all of the late comers are just coming in now. Don't panic. Don't rush, ladies. Find yourself a seat and enjoy the ride. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. Everyone whose love is born of God knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. In this love, the love of God was revealed among us. That God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this love, not that we love God, but that he loves us and sent his son for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we ought to love one another. For if we love one another, God abides in us and God's love will be perfect in us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. God's love was revealed among us, so that we might live through Jesus. And we have our first
please stand for the gospel reading. The reading today is taken from Matthew chapter 16, beginning to read verse 21 and ending verse 28. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. From that time on, Jesus began to show his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem and undergo great suffering at the hands of the elders and the chief priests and the scribes and be killed and on the third day be raised. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him, saying, God forbid it, Lord, this must never happen to you. But he turned and said to Peter, Go behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me. You are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. Then Jesus told his disciples, If he wants to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their lives, will lose it, and those who lose their life, for my sake, will find it. For what will it profit them, if they gain the whole world, but forfeit their life? Or what will they give in return for their life? The Son of Man is to come with his angels, in the glory of his Father. And then he will repay everyone for what has been done. Truly, I tell you, there are some standing here who will not taste death before they have seen the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. This is the gospel of the Lord. You may sit down. There we have that Bible reading, talking about Jesus having to go to Jerusalem to face his death. And there's Peter saying, God forbid, it shouldn't happen to you. But it does. He becomes a stumbling block in that path. And for us today, how many times do we come to that same saying, God forbid that happens? How many times do we sit there and think of others in a different way? How many of you can say you've sat there and thought, oh, the neighbour has got a nice new car, why them? What have they done to deserve that? I work far harder than them. Isn't it them same people that we pray for week in, week out, day in, day out? We come here to worship and to pray for those in need, for those who are sick in body, mind and spirit. We are taught to love thy neighbour as thyself. But when it comes to it, we hit that same stumbling block. And think to ourselves, well, why have they got that? And why haven't they? What does your neighbour have that you haven't got? It might be a nice new car. It might be a nice new TV. They might have a nice job. They might have a church which is very rich and has a vestry with a toilet. But most of our neighbours don't have what we have. And that's the love of God. We can sit there and say, it's a nice car. We can go shopping and say, well, I'd like that. But what you can't find in a shop, in a supermarket, online or in a catalogue, is the love of God. You can't find that. You can't buy it. But we can earn it. We can earn that love by praying for the neighbour that has those nice things. 
but maybe doesn't have the love of God. We can pray for those people who are playing music till late at night. They may be having a good time, but are they following what God wants them to do? We've come to that very awkward stage in all of our lives. In that time as a community, as a parish, and as a wider church, where we're on that balancing game. It's like a seesaw. Which side are we on this week? We've got that, oh, COVID's going down, things are reopening, and then the balance slips a little bit. What do we do as a church? Where do we go? What becomes our healing work? That's the only thing in our way. There's nothing to stop us going forward, apart from ourselves. And if we're not going forward, where are we going? The only other way possible, backwards. Unless we look towards the future, to what's to come. Back in that day when Jesus was travelling to Jerusalem, he knew he was to be killed for us. Imagine if he had that technology that we had today. What do you think that may have looked like? He could have sent um, and he shared a text. He would have probably done a TikTok dance about it and he probably would have been all over Instagram. But today we've got that technology. We've got that chance to move forward. I sometimes look at this pandemic as a bit like Noah's story. You know, Noah came along, the floods came, everybody was washed away to bring a new. Is that what we're aiming for here? It's not nice to think of it like that, but we've been given this fresh opportunity to go forward, to remove those stumbling blocks, and go to a new chapter. And the reading today brings us to that, because it reminds us that our Lord himself was led to his death, knowing it was going to happen, yet still went. Would we do that? If I said to you all today, let's all go to church because you're going to get COVID this week, we've brought it for you, would you turn up? No. But Jesus did, he still went forward, he still kept going for us. And now it's our chance to go forward for everybody else. It's our chance as a church and a parish to move forward, to show everybody that love, that encouragement, that joy that we've got. It's our time to do a bit of a sister act and break free of the doors, to go out there, possibly not sing in the community because my singing's not that good, but to show everybody who we are, what we are, what the love of God looks like. We're moving to that time, Christmas, very, very fast approaching. It's the end of the summer holidays. Everybody goes back to school next week. Christmas is there. We need to start preparing for that. How does that look for us as a church? That's something we're looking at this week. What does Christmas look like for us as a church? Is it a challenge or is it an opportunity? And that's what we need to look at rather. When Jesus walked to his death, was that a challenge or was that an opportunity? Do you see that as an opportunity to set us free? We need to do the same in our lives. We need to look at things and think, is God putting this here in front of me as a challenge or as an opportunity? life as an opportunity. What have we got to lose? Absolutely nothing. We're a fantastic congregation, a fantastic community, and we can continue to do better. Jumping over them stumbling blocks. Not allowing people in our way to let faith show us 
the way forward. Amen. Amen. Right on the cue. We have our second hymn. Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come. God, I come, I come, just as I am, and waiting not to rid my soul.
And it's because of Mary's love, Mary's determination, that we get where we are. It's because of her love that we had Jesus. We have done great things, O oh God, and his name is holy. And I've done that the wrong way around. But it doesn't matter. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lonely servant. From, the day, from this day all generations shall call me blessed. The Almighty has done, has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him, from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arms and scattered the proud, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel, to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. We come to our time of prayer. Most wonderful Lord, we thank you for bringing us through another week, for allowing us to gather here in your presence today. Lord, we thank you for allowing us to be us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of all, we pray for our community here in Creenborough and throughout the island. We pray for our parish, our deanery, for our diocese. Lord, we ask all that lead us to be in your prayers today. We ask you to help them and lead them to make the right decisions for us. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we thank you for the summer holidays, a time to refresh and to renew. Lord, we pray for all of the children and school staff heading back to a different kind of learning environment next week, not knowing where their classroom is, not knowing what time their lunch will be, for them being isolated in bubbles, not seeing friends from different year groups, for the uncertainty of travelling to school. Lord, we ask that you protect them, give them hope and wisdom, give them courage and peace. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. Lord, we continue to pray for all of the emergency workers, doctors and nurses, porters and cleaners, as they continue to battle against what's good for us. Give them strength and rest for the end of the day. Give them hope and determination. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all those who are sick, in body, mind or spirit. We ask that you heal them, give them love and hope. We pray for their families who suffer with them. Give them encouragement and Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we approach a new academic year, 
the start of the autumn term. May this time be filled with joy and laughter. As we look towards Christmas and the preparations that come with it, give us joy and hope to retell that story of your birth. To give everybody encouragement and love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, as we leave this week, walk with us into a new. Guide us and uphold us. Give us encouragement and joy. Give us determination to spread the good news of your gospel. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the faith of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. We say the words of the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. What about if we all stand today? Let's stand up. Keep me moving, you don't want to get stiff, you know, some of us are getting older. Let's lift our hands and say, the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Have peace this week. We may sit back down. We come to our final hymn. As the night draws in, we turn our thoughts and prayers towards God. Loving Lord, we thank you for blessing this day and for your goodness in it. We're so grateful for the gift of life. Thank you for all that you've allowed into our lives these past hours. The good, along with the hard things, which have reminded us of just how much we rely 
and need your presence filling us every single day. We thank you for your great love and care, for your grace and mercy. Thank you for always being with us and never leaving us. Lord, we ask that you provide for our needs as we sleep. We pray for your huge grace and favour. We thank you that you never sleep or slumber, that you are always at work, even in the dark of the night. Lord, we pray for your continued protection over our families and our friends and all those that we love. We ask for your hand to cover us and keep us distant from evil intent of the enemy, that you will be a barrier to surround us, so that we know we're safe in your hands. We pray for your healing and huge grace to encircle us in every need. We thank you for your comfort, for when we feel sad or anxious, we ask for your angels of protection to surround us, our families and all those who we love throughout this night, so that we may wake afresh tomorrow to greet a new day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Notice is, is PCC next Saturday, Sunday, so don't forget that if you're on the PCC. If you can make it, please do. There's lots of decisions to be made, lots of progress to make. It'll be Paul's first PCC. Bless him. So please come along. Um, Maz has broken her arm, so if you can pray for Maz, that would be great. Um, other than that, have a fantastic week. Three places, bless her. Broken in three places. We say the grace together. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.